can run asynchronous multi-party computation based on one-way functions by Sandro Coretti, Juan Garay, and Martin Hurt, and Vasilis Sikas, and Juan will give a talk. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. <coughs> so this is constant round asynchronous multi-party computation based on one-way <coughs> one <-way> functions. <coughs> I'm trying to work with Sandro Coretti, Martin Hurt, Vasilis Sikas, and I just noticed that Vasilis's name is in a smaller font. You see that? That's not done on purpose, and I hope Vasilis is not watching. But he cannot do anything about it, so we continue. All right, so circuit um, so multi-party computation, we already saw some definitions. We are talking about mutually distrustful parties trying to compute uh, a function of their inputs. And the idea, security-wise, is that these computations should, em should emulate the situation when we have a, a trusted party performing the computation for the parties. Okay? That's uh, what we call these days the simulation-based paradigm, where you would have this ideal world here with the trusted party doing the computation and the real world where the protocol is uh, being run. <coughs> and a distinguisher could not figure out, you know, which world the computation is happening. So it's called the simulation-based uh, paradigm. And in fact, is uh, more than that, is the universal, is universally composable uh, in the sense that then if you have this security definition, you can have this ideal functionality Okay, and any protocol realizes functionality can be plugged in in other protocols, and those protocols can be running concurrently in very complex environments. All right, so that's a UC framework, simulation based security. And typically, all these uh, protocols are designed and analyzed in what we call a synchronous communication network. Okay, where each party is connected by secure channels. And um, this is uh, an, an assumption that we're going to be making now for simplicity, but typically you would just need uh, reliable and authentic channels. And you can do security, you can implement a secure aspect if you are in the computational setting. So in this synchronous communication network setting, the protocol proceeds in rounds, and messages sent in one round are guaranteed to arrive in the next round. Okay? So that was the synchronous setting. We mentioned UC. Turns out that this uh, plain UC framework is inherently asynchronous. Okay? In the sense that the adversary has full control of a message delivery between, uh, even between honest parties. And there is a, in fact, there is a synchronous version of UC okay, introduced by uh, Katz, Maurer, Tagman, and Zikas, okay, which makes the UC framework uh, synchronous and therefore easier to, you know, design protocols for analyze uh, security and so forth. Okay, so because, syn you know, synchronous hardware is great for analysis, and how would you implement this in practice? It would be you know, you would assume that parties, participants have more or less synchronized clocks, and there is a time bound on the message latency. Okay, and then you would be, you would have a round, but typically this round, this is, you know, supper bound on the latency would be higher than the average transmission time, so that's one drawback. On the other hand, we mentioned the UC framework, which is totally asynchronous and overly pessimistic. And in fact, um, there might not be a reason for that because, given, you know, just give you this uh, quote from the blockchain era that says, uh, you know, information is uh, it diffuses. It's easy to, uh, to spread and hard to stifle. And anybody knows who said this? Blockchain era. All right. 
So this to motivate that, you know, you, you see the asynchronous hardware is overly pessimistic. Okay, so in fact, what we would shoot for, and this is the, the, what we are doing in this uh, uh, work, is that messages, you know, this network is asynchronous. There is no, um, you know, synchronicity assumption, but messages get delivered eventually. Okay, where, so in this uh, network, the adversary may delay messages by an arbitrary, by finite amount of time. It might be able to reorder messages. Okay, but there's no deletions. Things are, you know, eventually going to get through. Okay, and in fact, this is the model that was typically considered in early works by in this fault tolerant uh, distributed computing. Okay, you might be familiar with this uh, uh, famous impossibility result of Fish, Fisher, Lynch, and Patterson. Okay, and in fact, in asynchronous MPC by Menor et al. Okay, so in this sense, this asynchronous network with eventual delivery is opportunistic because you're not going to wait for the maximum, you know, delay to move to the next round, but things are going to, you know, as, as, as soon as it, uh, they can, the message will arrive. And in fact, we noticed that this uh, type of network, this capability had not been modeled in UC. Okay, which is uh, one of the things uh, we do. This is not our main result, but uh, we need this tool to be able to say formally what we achieve. Okay, so we formalize one contribution. is we formalize this asynchronous model with eventual, eventual delivery in UC framework. For this, we need the notion of asynchronous run complexity. And also, we have to <coughs> model what the basic communication resources in this uh, a framework, framework will be, and those are a secure channel. Yes, I say instead of secure channel, the computational setting, you can think of reliable and authentic channels. And a broadcast type functionality, which is uh, asynchronous Byzantine agreement. Okay, and uh, it's worth pointing out here that in the synchronous setting, you would typically assume a broadcast functionality, right? You, you have like point-to-point -point communication and you have broadcast functionality. Turns out that in this uh, world, broadcast is not achievable. Okay, essentially, if you have a distinguished sender, you, know, you cannot wait for that sender because you don't know if the guy is late or is being delayed. But what is achievable is the Byzantine agreement. Everybody has an input version of the problem, okay? And this is a broadcast-like communication resource for this type of network, uh, for this type of setting. Okay, so once we have a little, we've, we have done the modeling <coughs> for this uh, uh, asynchronous, asynchronous model with eventual delivery, we come to our main result, which is the constant round MPC, so kind of multi computation protocol. And by constant round, we mean that the run complexity is independent of the circuit's multiplicative depth. It's based on a standard assumptions, CRF. Tolerates up to a third <coughs> of corruptions. And it turns out that this is optimal in this <coughs> asynchronous setting. And it also tolerates an adaptive adversary, which means that <coughs> adversaries may corrupt parties they don't have to commit to which part to corrupt at the beginning of execution, but it's a dynamic type corruption situation. Okay, so those are the two things that we do. So let's uh, see what the situation was before this. Prior work on constant round MPC protocols in the synchronous network. We have a bunch based on circuit garbling as we just saw. We have more based on uh, FHE. This is due to Asharov et al. And in this setting, you can tolerate up to a half of corruptions. Okay, and here, 
You also have to assume, we said, remember I said in synchronous networks, broadcasts uh, work. But if you want to do it constant around on a point-to-point -point setting, this, uh, you know, you, you have to settle for expected constant round, okay, for these primitives. I mean, you can assume it as a resource, and it would be just invocation about this is one round, but if you want to implement it in a point-to-point -point network, that is expected constant. And this was noticed uh, early on, in particular by, we had a paper in crypto formalizing this aspect. Okay, but the bottom line is that in the synchronous uh, uh, world, the constant round MPC protocols existed, as opposed to in the asynchronous model with eventual delivery, our model. Until this concurrent and independent work by Rand Cohen in uh, this past PKC, which shows how to do asynchronous MPC based on FAG. Okay. And in fact, that's why our paper now is called Based on One-Way Functions, because uh, you ran already show how to do it based on this uh, stronger assumption. This protocol tolerates N over 3 corruptions, which we said is optimal, but uh, withstands, is uh, secure against static adversaries, and also as uh, ours assume this resource, asynchronous business in agreement. Okay, so this was the situation so far. And there are all other known protocols, but uh, for asynchronous MPC, okay, but uh, the run complexity was proportional to the depth of the circuit. Okay, so until this result, after this year, there was a gap between synchronous and asynchronous. Okay, so let me, oops tell you a little bit about how we formalize this eventual delivery, delivery capability in um, the UC framework. <coughs> so one first resource is what we call the asyn asynchronous secure channel. Okay, and here you have a sender, a receiver. Okay, and the secure channel functionality stores message, messages and ma maintains some delay Okay, this is a fixed integer, okay, that the adversary is going to be able to manipulate. Okay, the, the adversary is going to be able to tell, this is, uh, intuitively, this is T, so the delay in the number of operations that this functionality is going to wait until delivering a message. Okay, and these things work in a fetch mode. Okay, if you are supposed to receive a message according to the protocol, you're going to keep asking the functionality, you know, do I have a message, do I have a message? All right, the adversary can manipulate that, but up to T, because then polynomial time adversary is going to be running out of time. Because this is how we model asynchronous secure channels. All right, and then we can formulate the notion of protocol execution is in this model, where the party is going to be sending messages using this resource and then polling for messages. Okay, so naturally you can now define the notion of round complexity in this setting as the number of times, the maximum number of times that the protocol switches between sending and fetching. Okay, that's the natural notion, round complexity for asynchronous MPC. So that was a secure channel. Similarly, we can talk about asynchronous secure function evaluation. Okay, where the functionality is going to collect all the inputs all right, and then as on the computation is performed, everybody provide inputs. Then the adversary might be, might be able to influence it. Well, I'm going to increase the delay, you know, increase the delay or reduce the delay, but you cannot do it, you know, arbitrarily because it's going to be running out of time. Okay, and importantly, in this setting, there is no input completeness in the sense that not all not all honest parties are going to be able to. Uh, provide inputs because you cannot wait for some of them. You won't be able to distinguish if some party is uh, late or is corrupt. Okay. But you can agree on a core set of uh, parties that are going to be providing this input. Okay. That's fixed. And then that's the computation that's going to be performed. The other parties are going to be as assigned a default value. 
that this is different from the single setting where all the honest parties inputs are going to be taken into account. Okay, and similarly, we mentioned asynchronous business agreement as a resource you know, it shares the same profile with asynchronous SFE in the sense that it's going to be collecting input, okay, and if all the inputs are the same of this core set, that's going to be the outcome of this broadcast-like functionality. And if the inputs of the honest parties differ, you know, it's going to provide some uh, value provided by the adversary, okay, but it's going to be consistent. Everybody's going to see the same value. Okay, so we model the communication resources for asynchronous and PC. Now we're going to go to, uh, we're going to see how to build a constant round asynchronous MPC protocol. <coughs> constant round means the round complexity is independent of the circuit's depth, based on standard assumptions, as I said, tolerates a third uh, uh, number of corruption, is uh, unsecured against an adaptive adversary, which I'm repeating here. Okay, and the function, we're going to be assuming that it's specified by a Boolean circuit. And protocol overview, the protocol is going to consist in, of uh, three phases. In one phase, we're going to be computing, in the first phase, a distributed version of a garbled circuit as we just saw, or a variant of it. Okay, but this sort of pre-computation, this garbling phase, we're going to be, it's going to be a constant depth function. Okay, this is basically said, well, we're going to garble things, we're going to be generating randomness. Okay, this is going to be done in constant time, constant number of rounds. And for this, we're going to be using a protocol by Benor, Kelman, and Rabin, which, if you're familiar with the literature, is an unconditional, it's an information theoretic secure protocol for asynchronous networks, uh, models. Okay, but same as, so this is the asynchronous version of BGW, the information theoretic MPC protocol, and as such takes, is, uh, you know, the number of rounds is linear in the depth of the circuit. Okay, so that's one thing, except that for this pre-computation phase, because this function is constant depth, we don't care, still going to be constant. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing is, if you're familiar with this protocol, these protocols work on arithmetic circuits. And I said we're going to be working on Boolean circuit representations of functions. So we're going to have to do some tricks to adapt this protocol to our setting. After running this, we're going to be a phase two where protocol, where players are going to be complete this phase, circuit garbling. And finally, in phase three, parties are going to be computing this uh, garbled circuit locally. Okay, so we said Boolean circuits, circuit garbling. Let me remind you a little bit what this is. So we have this uh, Boolean circuit uh, representing the function. And for each wire, we're going to have a mask, a bit MW, and two keys, you know, depending on the value of that bit. And then every circuit is going to be evaluated, maintaining the invariant that if the mask value is Z, is Z, then one key is going to be known, and the other key is going to remain secret. Okay, this is a traditional version, uh, variant of the traditional, yeah, um, global circuit approach. And this can be represented like this for a generic gate. These are going to be the mask values, okay? Oh, and we're going to be using a circuit that is usually only uses NAND gates. NAND is a complete gate, so you know, we can just do all the, you know, just use NAND gates. So here, for each value, each mask input values, what we're going to be doing is first unmask the inputs, you know, perform the computation, and mask them again. Okay, 
And then the garbled entry is going to be the encryption, double encryption using the two corresponding keys of the mask output and the key corresponding to that wire. Okay, I'm simplifying notation here using Z for all the outputs, but it would be corresponding to each uh, row. Okay, and that's pretty much what I'm saying here. Okay, and so A and B are the two input uh, wires to the gate, and C is the output wire. Okay, so it's the basic Yao circuit garbling approach. Now, I mentioned that uh, we were using this uh, B BKR uh, MPC protocol to do things, right? So one might wonder, well, you have the, you can do this, you can probably do the, you know, encryption, even you decipher using the same protocol. So one issue is that, well, that's going to be a huge circuit, not necessarily constant. And the other issue is it will not be black box. Okay, so what we use is a distributed encryption approach due to uh, formalized by Damgard and Ishai, which if this is the regular encryption formulation, distributed encryption is as follows. Instead of just one key, assume n keys, one for each party. If you're trying to encrypt some message m, you seek a share m, and then give that share to the ith party who is going to encrypt it and send it to everybody. Now, assuming everybody has, at some point, all the keys, because they're going to be able to decrypt and make sure that reconstruct the secret sharing, and, you know, that would be the, the outcome. Okay, so <coughs> this was circuit gobbling with distributing encryption. <coughs> So before, remember, we saw for each wire, we had two keys. Now we're going to have <coughs> two key sets for each wire, <coughs> one key for each participant. And the invariant is going to be similar, that if the mask value is Z, then one set is going to be known, one set of keys is going to be known, and the other one is going to remain secret. Okay, so this was garbling without distributed encryption, and this is with distributed encryption which is similar, except that here, what, what we represent by this, the secret sharing of the outcome and the corresponding sets of keys. Okay? So this is going to be done by this BKR protocol that I mentioned. All the shares are going to be sent during this pre-processing for each gate, for each table, to all the parties. And all that process is a constant def uh, function. Okay, so this, uh, this is the BKR protocol that's going to be choosing mask and sub keys. It's going to be computing this uh, secret sharing of all the tables, and it's going to give the parties their right shares of things. Okay. Now, so there are a couple of things that we have to take care about here. One is that, <coughs> well, I mentioned we are, we are going to be using this protocol to do the evaluation. This is a linear, si linear depth, but this is a, a constant uh, depth uh, circuit function. And the more, uh, tri the trickier one is that we are talking about a Boolean circuit, and this BKR protocol is for arithmetic circuits. So we have to make sure that, you know, we can do, we can compute our arithmetic circuits is a NAND operation. This is easily done by having the, this arithmetic operation in the circuit, except that now you have to make sure that all the inputs are one or zero, right? And there's another technique we can use to make sure that corrupt parties don't, you know, don't deviate from that, that all, all values that are input are one, ones and zeros. And there is another technique, easy, another technique to achieve this. And if that, you know, what you do that in the beginning, and if the party doesn't do that, you just replace his input value by a sharing of zero. 
All right, so I'm out of time almost. OK, so we do all the sharing. <coughs> and then parties start encrypting you know, with their own keys, with their own shares of keys, shares of the values they have and send to everybody. OK, and remember, in the output table, we have shares of keys that are needed for the next wire. OK, so thing uh, diffuse percolate through the circuit. OK. Now, one, once all that happened, players are able to compute to evaluate this um, uh, function you know, locally, given that they were able to reconstruct all the keys from all parties and all the shares. OK, so this why, why, why does one encrypt things and not just secret shares is the reason is you just send stuff that can be decrypted that opens up just one row of the table. Okay, so um, and you do you wait until you know you have the enough shares that lie on the that are t consistent lie on the right polynomial. Okay, just to recap, we presented a protocol comes around protocol based on one-way functions. One-way functions because this uh, you know encryption is based on the only operation that we have here is uh, you know encryption. Based, that can be based on one-way functions. This could potentially secure against adaptively, adaptive adversaries of the order players, constant round, and it's a black box on one-way functions. And the full version is in the preprint. And that's it. Thank you. So we have time for one quick question. If no one, thank you. Uh, one again. <laughs>